Hello and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. The test of normality is one of the important assumptions that we need to consider, especially if you are planning to use t-tests, analysis of variance, and other types of parametric tests. Uh, because if this assumption was not satisfied, then you need to consider using uh, the non-parametric alternatives. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the Shapiro-Wilkes test, one of the most reliable tests of normality. Before we run the test, we need to make sure that our data set is continuous or they are under interval or ratio level of measurement. And on the right side, we can see here the formula for the Shapiro-Wilkes tests. So I prepared this column for the denominator and these two columns for uh, the numerator. In my example, uh, here's the internet usage of the respondents in terms of the number of hours they spend on the internet. So you can see here that uh, the first thing that you need to do is to arrange the uh, numbers in ascending order. In case you have not uh, arranged them yet, you can just uh, select the whole data set. Uh, right click the mouse and go to sort and smallest to largest after arranging the data set in ascending order we now need to compute for the mean of the data set by using equal sign the average function then select the data range close parenthesis enter and we now have the mean which is 9.8 and we're going to use this mean to uh, get the value for each of these cells. So to do that, we need to get the difference, uh, the difference between each cell and the mean. So equal sign, open parenthesis, 6, which is this one, minus the mean, which is 9.8. Then uh, use the caret symbol for the square of this difference. So we now have 14.44 for 6. So to copy paste the formula, we need to change the this reference to absolute value and to do that, we need to put dollar sign force for the cell and the column. Enter. Then drag this selection for us to now get the values here in each of these cells to complete the first column. For the A sub I column, we'll be needing this uh, table which I found on the net. So you can see here the coefficients A sub I equivalence uh, for the normality test. So in the column, uh, the number of samples are indicated while on the rows uh, are the number of uh, pairings that we have. So in our example, I have 40 respondents, so I need to find the column that contains 40 respondents. So on this page, we can see the 40 here in the column and uh, dividing 40 by 2, that's 20. So our reference is 20 and 40. So all these values in this column will be used. Now, what if you have 41? So if you have 41, all you need to do is to go here on this column and uh, as we all know, 41 is not divisible by 2. In this case, we're just going to uh, use 0 0.000 in the cell that contains the 21st uh, number in the data set. So in this case, um, I'll be selecting this the last column under 40. Now, as you can see here, I just copy pasted the values from the column in the table. And to fill out the remaining uh, cells in this column, we need to uh, copy paste this here. Let's just uh, put it here. Then arrange them in ascending order. Uh, that is smallest to largest. Then transforming them to negative numbers. So here we have uh, negative 1 times this value. We have negative 0 0.0049. So drag this. As you can see, uh, the, the thick cross there. 
that's for copy pasting the formula for these cells and you just need to copy paste this here in the remaining cells so here in this option I'm going to uh, paste it using just the numerical values okay so in case you have uh, add number of pairs or you have add number of uh, uh, samples uh, you can see here that uh, it's possible that you'll see zero here so if this is zero you don't need to uh, copy paste the zero in the next cell so in this case if uh, this one is zero you just need to copy paste the uh, values above for the last column all we need to do is to multiply each of the values in the column D to column B so here it's D2 times B2 enter look for the thick cross drag it down here and we have now the final the values for the final column now to finalize the values in the numerator and the denominator of the formula all we have to do is to get the total for column C and column E so here to get the total uh, use the function sum select the data range enter then we have 112.4 then get the sum of uh, column E for us uh, to get negative 10.3806 to get the value of the numerator, just need to um, get uh, the value here, use the value in column E, the total value in column E, this one, and then caret symbol squared. That is for the numerator. So we have equal sign, the total, and squared, square that total. So we have 107.7569. Now now for the denominator, it was already squared a while ago, so we just need the sum. Here is column C. Select this cell, and then you have here uh, 112.4. Now to get the final value for the T statistic, or the test statistic rather, we just need to divide this to values. So the formula is equal sign, numerator, divided by denominator so that our test statistic is 0 0.958691 so to easily interpret it later how about we just um, round it off to three decimal places and the final step now for us is to identify the p-value and remember in this uh, test the null hypothesis should not be rejected so that we can say that the sample belongs to a normal distribution and for that the p-value for the shafiro wilkes test should be greater than uh, the significance level in this case if it's five percent uh, it should be uh, gr the p-value should be greater than five percent to say that uh, these samples are normally distributed and to compare the p-value for the test statistic that we got we're going to need the quantiles of the Shafir Wilkes test for normality, which is also available in the internet. So here, uh, we need to identify the values above five uh, percent. So our reference is this column, five percent. So n should be forty because that's uh, the number of respondents in our example, and the reference for that is 0 0.940, which is under the five percent column. So if your reference is uh, one percent you can use this uh, values or if it's ten percent you can d use this column so in our case we're going to use a uh, five percent and that is uh, point nine four zero so from the table uh, the reference value that we got is uh, zero point nine four zero so we need now to compare these two values, the test statistics that we got a while ago, which is 0.959 to 0.94. So the test statistic is greater than 0.94. So we can now say that the p-value is greater than 0 
So the decision is to retain the null hypothesis, which tells us that the sample belongs to a normal distribution. So if uh, you got these values, you can now proceed with any um, parametric test that you intend to use. But what if the test statistic is, say, 0.85 and the reference value that you got is 0.94? We, are, we all know that 0.85 is less than 0.94, so if that's the case, the p-value is less than 0.05. So if it's less than 0.05, the null hypothesis will be rejected, and alternative tests tell us that the sample does not belong to a normal distribution. So if your intention is to use a parametric test, the samples should be normally distributed. So your aim is to have uh, test st statistic greater than the reference value that you will get from the table that I have shown a while ago. Now, if you plan to identify the approximate p-value for the test statistic, you can refer to this linear ratio formula. That's all for this video. If you want more of these discussions, please check out my playlist in the description down below. See you in the next video.